खैर एस के चेयरमैन दिनेश कुमार खरा से खास बातचीत की इटिना और इटिना स्वदेश के मैनेजिंग एडिटर निकुंज टालवे ने आइए सुन लेते हैं वो क्या कहते हैं Two thousand twenty-one has been a year of pain and gain. It was a painful year because of the second wave, but it's been an eventful year, and it's been a year of riches for investor. But there is one more word which I would like to describe to capture my next guest on the show, and that is resilience, and that is what State Bank of India has exhibited in this pandemic crisis. I've used this line before. to describe the stock performance of state bank of india that elephants can also dance and that's what state bank of india has done it has handsomely managed to beat the market the bank nifty and some of the other peer banks so how things looking for the bank business economy and for the man who is the chairman of state bank of india for next year so let's discuss all that all that and much more with mr dinesh khara chairman sbi mr khara first wishing you and your team a remarkable year ahead like i said that if there is one word which captures the two spirit of sbi in the pandemic crisis that is resilience thank you very much nikhil ji and i also wish all the very best to you and your team for the year 2021 22 mr kara 2021 was a slow year but it is finishing in a grand style do you think 2022 the aggregate demand the economy the comeback what we've seen is here to stay or do you think this is sugar rush which will fade away no i think to my mind the trend which you have seen uh, say ever since from the month of october onwards it has uh, it has shown a huge amount of promise uh, in terms of the demand coming back in terms of uh, the supply chain aberrations getting addressed uh i think the only thing is the recent variant which has uh, which is actually causing bit of a concern so hopefully i think if at all we can tackle this variant also well to by by to we should be and uh, if at all uh, we succeed in doing that i'm quite hopeful that uh, the kind of a recovery which you have witnessed in last four to three months that should be uh, that should be there to stay and uh, hopefully the year 22 calendar year 22 should be much better than uh, what we have seen in the early part of the of the financial year 21 22 so since we are in a progressing cycle the year will be much better but will 2023 uh, uh, 2022 calendar year will it be a grand year because now looks like we are at the cusp where capex is about to start you guided for a 10% credit growth do you think that will be a big reality in this coming year uh, as i mentioned that uh, only, uh, the only the only issue could be the new variant and uh, i'm quite hopeful that uh, we should be able to navigate this difficulty also very well and based on that uh, generally tended towards optimism so i would rather say that 22 should be uh, much more promising year and we should be in a position to see much stronger growth to stay on and high inflation and possibility of a sharp rate hike do you think that could disturb the apple cart uh i think uh, the the kind of preparedness which is there in the system today when it comes to the healthcare and also the the capacity to deal with the, such emergencies and exigencies uh i don't expect that uh, this particular variant should be impacting the apple cart per se and if at all whatever is seen in the west if at all that is a guide for the things to happen perhaps it has got a uh, much higher transmissibility but not as uh, as severe in, in its nature so i think uh, if at all that is what it is going to be even in the worst possible situation Uh, we should be able to navigate it well. This is what my assessment is. So while 2021, we've seen comeback in retail, we've seen some comeback in uh, SME, but the corporate real demand for working capital plus uh, new loans is still muted. When do you see that coming back? In fact, if you really ask me, for last two months we have seen some kind of attraction as well. The corporate 
availment of the limits are also concerned because at a point of time we were having as high as about 5 trillion Indian rupees worth of unaware limits uh, from our system, from the corporate side. But we have started seeing uh, the availment happening in last two months. Uh, of course, uh, for last about 15 days, there is some bit of a slowness which is seen, but otherwise, uh, if at all that trend continues, which we have seen from the last two months, that should uh, go very well in terms of uh, more new investments also happening from the private sector. We already have got pipeline, which is almost about 1 trillion plus Indian rupees for proposals, both for uh, you know the private sector investments into various sectors and also some uh, announcements in the working capital also. Uh, I think uh, the other very important aspect is that the supply chain related dislocations which are there, uh, there is an attempt on the part of the corporates to address those supply chain related dislocations also. Uh, so actually, uh, all said and done, this actually augurs very well in terms of availability of corporate credit from the system and as well as new, new proposals, uh, I mean, site of new proposals. Mr. Kada, if one looks at the banking landscape, sir, how do you think that this current credit cycle, which, say, which let's say started a couple of months ago, will be different from the last big credit cycle we saw? I mean, what will be the difference and similarity between this new credit cycle versus the last credit cycle? I think the new credit cycle is, uh, is, is coming at a point of time when the borrowers are quite responsible in their behavior when it comes to borrowing. So they are quite mindful in terms of uh, how much leverage they should raise and for what all activities they should raise the leverage. So this kind of a responsible behavior from the borrowers actually makes a significant difference in terms of the, the likely uh, uh, credit behavior on the part of the borrowers and as well as from the banking system also. Uh, the the mistakes which were committed at the time of the last big underwriting exercise in the year 2008, etc. So I think people have learned the lessons, though it's a bit of a hard way. The structures and systems have been strengthened quite a lot. And I think uh, to that extent, uh, the, the accidents which we saw post the big uh, credit cycle which you saw in the year 2008-9, I don't expect those to recur again. But since you've garnered a strong CASA in the pandemic time, when the interest rate cycle will start, you know, start reversing, can I, can I safely assume that you will enjoy superior spreads because of that and that is one differentiating factor? Uh, I think the spread is also a function of at what price we are in a position to lend. And since, you know, in the initial stages, there is going to be disruption on both the sides. So we'll have to wait and watch or really things really pan out. But yes, uh, nevertheless, our effort uh, overall is to generate as decent names as possible. Is 3% plus the new normal for uh, SBI names now? New normal for SBI names is 3.1% uh, plus. Okay. Uh, walk us through... Uh, well, it used to be around 3.2, 3.3, but nevertheless, we should, we should stay above 3.1. Mr. Kara, while there is marked improvement in all your metric, all your you know key metrics, whether it's the NPA which have come down, NIMS which have improved, but the cost to income ratio, sir, you are attempting to get it under control, but there is limited success. There is no remarkable success. Why is that? Uh, there are certain rigidities when it comes to the cost structure of the bank. So in such a situation, the only way out is to improve the income stream. And as the economy was reeling under various kind of pressures, so the ability of the bank to really significantly improve the income stream was actually quite limited. So hopefully once we have a clear uh, normal year, we should be in a position to significantly improve our income streams also. And that will probably help us in bringing the cost income ratios in check and control. 